Right, well, I just thought I'd do a quick test on the uh, rotary system using the solid state driver circuit um, because I was curious. Well, because I since I put the new flux traps in there, um, oh, you'll have to look at previous videos, but if you remember, I used my flux trap with these two laminations, and that is on each end of where the um, actuator coils are at this end and at this end and I hadn't tested this on this con with these flux traps on here so I thought well I wanted to find out um, I, how much isolation it gives well it actually gives very good isolation um, I mean I can basically I've got the LEDs running but the only problem is the amount of power, the power conversion is very bad so I mean basically I'm only I'm actually driving about 300 milliamps. Um, well, it's 40 milliamps for the meter. But well, the actual this thing here uses about I think it's 40. Oh, it's 50 actually. This this box that boosts the power up I think is about 50 milliamps, and uh, it's boosting up to 26 to drive the uh, oscillator circuit. Right now, um, so. I'm basically using three, well, two, well, if you look at that's 290, but subtract 50 milliamps from that. Um, so that will be, uh, what, 230? Um, let's see, 230, is it? Two, no, two, 220. So, yeah, 220, 220 milliamps is basically going into the coils right so obviously i can interrupt that with this switch down here so if i press that button down there um and look at the meter across the room uh, you can see it drops right back on the current so yeah um now yeah the interesting thing though is that when i shot the output down um to the leds i'm not seeing anything significant on the loading let's just see i've taken the leds off let's short it out right i'm shorting out these leads right like this uh, the input I'm just intermittently shorting it out and excellent isolation that's good so let's put the LEDs back in circuit right so it's giving very very good isolation so this is what i'm interested in but you see it's just a shame really i'm not getting a good power factor conversion uh, i think the reason for that really is that the amount of power it's requiring to operate these switches these books switches is quite high to drive them now, i've got two coils each coil on each end each coil on each end right it's basically using about 100 milliamps at this resonant frequency and the resonant frequency oh i'm not sure what it is actually at the moment i haven't got my oscilloscope set up on the frequency at the moment but yeah you can pretty much hear it anyway that's the frequency um i think you can hear it probably <laughs> anyway the point is the actual flux trap switches do work very well but um, in order to get a better power conversion on the system, I would probably have to use much larger um, magnets um, on there or something to actually get much more voltage onto the secondary coils. But I am seeing uh, about, ignore the yellow one because that channel's not in use. But, I am seeing peak to peak about nine volts actually uh, at this rate. It's like out of a 3.8, mean 1.8, and maximum six volts. So it's not bad. Uh, that's the waveform. 
and that's when I'm driving it directly with a <coughs> my single generator circuit. Anyway, uh, sorry I'm moving around a lot. Um, you're probably getting dizzy. But yeah, I wanted to do that test because uh, I'm going to be moving on on the next stage with a back to the rotary system, and I'm going to be using some MOSFET, some triax. Sorry, um, I'm basically going to use some triax to switch in the exit point as the rotors move away from the actuators. I'm going to use this these coils, which are actually being resonated at the moment. I'm going to use those coils as my trigger coils. To drive the triax, so that when the rotor is, rotor moves around and enters, it will trigger the triax. The triax will con will start switching the secondary output coils into circuit, and they'll drive my output circuit. And then, as the um, rotor the the waveform starts to fall down, as it starts to uh, on the on the fall time. As it exits, the the holding current of the triac, the holding current is around 10 milliamps. So I'm hoping that below 10 milliamps, uh, say 9 milliamps or 8 milliamps, the triac will basically disengage and turn the output from the coil off, allowing the rotors to move easily out. And then the next cycle will begin when the as the as the next magnet moves in to the trigger coil, because these are going to be used as trigger coils, because they don't have a lot of voltage output, and I think it's just about right for, to trigger the triax anyway. And so anyway, that's what the plan is. Uh, that's what I'm planning on doing. But as I say, I've got a lot of things to do in um, June, so I've got quite a few appointments. So don't expect it to be tomorrow. I don't expect it to be next week. It, it's probably going to be... I've got things to move around, you know. I've got electrical safety and gas checks and all that, all that happening this month. So yeah, uh, it's annoying. It's really annoying, but yeah, it's got to be done. So uh, once it's out of the way, I can get back to the project, you know. All right, thanks for watching.